welcome and today I want to show you how to make this soap bag. My husband's been asking me for months to make him one. He ordered one on Amazon and it offended me. So finally I'm making this video because handmade is so much better. So let's talk about the supplies. First is the yarn. I use this dishy worsted weight from We Crochet. Absolutely love it for this. It's fantastic. And then you will also need some scissors, of course, a tapestry needle. If you lose your needles a lot, I suggest a needle holder. This one is from Furls Crochet. It helps me keep my needles in a place where I don't lose them in the couch all the time. Then of course you will need a crochet hook. I'm using this eye hook from Furls Crochet. It is the Streamline Swirl, and this is the cookies and cream version. Each one's unique, which is why I love them. And then also, if you want to make this eye cord, which I adore, this is the Lucid Fork from Furls Crochet as well. And all these links are in the pattern and on my blog. This is so much fun for making the eye cords. All right, let's get started. Now, if you love handmade soaps like I do, they come in a variety of sizes. Um, obviously you can tell I've got quite a few different sizes here. So I want to show you how to adjust this pattern for the size you want to make. Right now I'm going to go a little bit smaller than this one. I'm going to make a size down. We're going to make this one on camera and I'll talk about how to adjust that sizing. So to get started, we're going to start with the base. This is worked from bottom up and in the round. So we're going to create a slip knot and we're going to go ahead and put that onto our hook. And now we are going to chain six. I do kind of like to chain these a bit tight since it's the bottom, but it's not as big of a deal for this. And then we're going to do one more chain. So a total of seven chains. I tightened down that last one. It is my turning chain. So I have six chains plus my turning chain. This first part will be worked around this chain, this um, beginning chain. So I'm going to start by single crocheting two into the second chain from the hook. And then I'm going to crochet into the next four, single crochet into the next four. And now in this last chain, I am going to single crochet four stitches into that last one. And now I'm going to single crochet four. And now I am going to go back into my very first stitch. So the stitch that we already single crocheted two into, and I'm going to single crochet two more. And then I'm going to join to the very first stitch in this round. So what this has done is it's created a oval shape and now we're going to work around this again for round two. So for round two, we are going to chain one. I like to tighten down my chains. And in the very first stitch, we are going to single crochet two. And what I like to do when I'm crocheting in the round is I like to place a stitch marker. So I have the stitch marker from We Crochet. I'm going to go ahead and put that into my very first stitch. And now I'm going to single crochet into the next six stitches. And now on this edge, I'm going to do two single crochets into the next two stitches. So two single crochets in this one, and now two single crochets in this one. And now I'm going to single crochet six.
And into this very last stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. So now we have 20 stitches total, and I'm going to join to the first stitch in the round. Now here's where we can adjust for sizing. So this is where we would adjust smaller or larger. So for the bottom of this, I continued to go two more rounds of increasing, and I'm gonna do one more round of increasing for this size, but if I wanted to keep it really small, like if I had a small handmade soap that's really tiny, almost like a travel size, you could stop here. But we're gonna do one more round for this size. And a chain one, and then we're gonna repeat kind of what we've done before. We're gonna do two single crochets into the first. Mark that first stitch. And now we're going to single crochet into the next eight stitches. So however many stitches you're single crocheting until the ends will increase by two each time that you um, go up a size. And now I'm going to single crochet two stitches into the next two. So I'll go one, two into that stitch and then one, two into that stitch. So we're just increasing on the, on the ends on the sides here. And then I'll single crochet eight. And then the last stitch, I will single crochet two. And then I'm going to join. Seriously, that's totally crazy. Now, if you want to, before we continue on, you can weave in your beginning end just because it's a bit easier right now before we start building the sides of this bag. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now, if I were to want to increase this again to go a little bit bigger, I would do two single crochets in the first, then I would single crochet 10, two single crochets in each of the next two, single crochet 10, and then two single crochets in the last. And then no matter what size you choose to do, these next steps will be the same as well. So I'm going to chain one, and now we're going to begin to work in this moss stitch. So I will single crochet into the first stitch, and then I'm going to mark it. And now I'm going to chain one, skip one, single crochet. And that's what we're going to repeat around. We're not increasing anymore. So I chain one, skip one, single crochet. And we're going to do that all the way around. Go back to here. And now we're going to chain one. So single crochet, chain one. That will be our repeat around. We are not increasing. So I'll skip this one. I will single crochet, chain one, skip one. Single crochet, chain one, skip one. Single crochet, chain one, skip one. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. And then when we get to the end here, I end with a chain one, skip one, and then I'm going to join to the first stitch in the round. 
So that's the first row of you doing that moss stitch. For the next row, I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to chain another one. So this is like my beginning chain and then the first stitch in the round. So I'm going to skip this first stitch and then I'm going to single crochet into the chain one space from the row below. I'm going to go ahead and mark that first chain space so I know where to join when I come back around. So now I'm going to chain one, skip one, single crochet. And when you single crochet, you're single crocheting into the chain space. So chain one, skip one, single crochet. We're going to do that all the way around. So I've put my soap in here to see how I like it. I think this is great. I have done 18 total rounds after the increasing. So 18 rounds of this moss stitch. So I like this length. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off here and weave in my end. Of course, I love to do somewhat like the invisible join where I go through the top V part of this first stitch of the round and I'm going to pull it through. And then I'm going to go back down into the center of the previous stitch. And once you do that, it kind of makes a mock stitch on top here and you can't really tell where your join is. So I'm going to weave in my end now. So we are almost done here. We just need to make this drawstring so that we can close the top of this bag. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to use this fork. I'm going to place the yarn through the front, from the back to the front of that. And then I'm going to bring the yarn from the right tong in the middle to the left tong and then back. So here's what I'm going to do. Now that I have two loops on the right hand side, I take the bottom loop over the top, pull this tight. And then the way I like to do it is I simply turn the fork, the lucid fork, and then I do that again. So I'm always taking the bottom strand over the top strand, tightening down and turning. So I, I do like to use um, a little yarn needle for this just because I find I will ruin my nails sometimes if I'm like picking at yarn. <laughs> but I also find this faster. It's just easier for me. So that's why you'll see me using a yarn needle to grab this bottom strand over the top. And then I'll just keep doing this until I have my um, eye cord, the length that I like to do for this top. So I will make it um, approximately 10 inches long, maybe even a little bit less for this one. So here's a little bit more of this I cord in progress. Um, it just keeps flowing down through the center circle and I just keep simply turning and pulling that bottom loop over the top on the right hand side of this fork. So they're really relaxing to make and I just love the way these I cords come out with this tool. Now that I have the length I want, which is actually about 13 inches. I'm going to fasten off the yarn here and place it through a needle. And now I'm going to take this off of the fork and I'm going to go first through this side and kind of tighten this side down and then go through the next loop and that will finish off the I cord. Now I have two ends. Here's what I want to do before I join this. I want to weave it through the second crochet row down from the top on one of the sides. So I'm just going to weave in and out of every chain space. And pull that I cord through. And once I'm back at the beginning, I can go ahead and see how this looks. So if I tighten that down, that looks pretty great. I like it. I'm going to even out my cords so that they're even. Pull this through a little bit more. 
There we go. And then if you want, you can place a bead. I have these beads left over from another project that I picked up on Amazon. This isn't a necessary step, but it is kind of nice for tightening down this I-cord. Um, and also it's a great fun detail. I think for this one, I'm just going to simply try weaving in my ends and leaving these open for a little bit of variety. And now I'm going to take these two ends and I'm going to create a knot so that that bead can't come off and the bag can stay closed. And also so it can hang. If you have something to hang it in the shower, you can simply hang it. And then this bag is reusable washable and it also helps keep your soap lasting longer especially with those handmade soaps we want that so I can still undo the bag and place a new soap in and then tighten it down when I'm ready for using it I absolutely enjoy these bags I really hope you enjoyed this project as much as I have it's really quick fun and easy for your home or even for a nice handmade gift with some nice soaps um, come on back really soon for my next project and be sure to hit that subscribe button on this channel as well as using the hashtag Brianna K Designs on social media so I can see what you make. Until next time, I'll see you soon.